Hi, this is Maggie from Design Code Debug Repeat. Welcome to the channel. This video and the others in the Chapter 4 Problem Solving with Python playlist are an introduction to the concepts you will need to write programs with looping or repetition. This video accompanies Problem Solving with Python Chapter 4, but it's okay if you don't have the book. The videos stand alone as instruction on these topics. In the last few videos, we talked about the two ways to write loops in Python, conditional loops or while loops, and counting loops or for loops. We also talked about nested loops, some loop uses and patterns such as input validation and using a loop to accumulate a total. In this video, we're going to talk about the basics of reading data from a text file. And in the next video, we'll expand on this to use a loop and to use some loop patterns. Let's dive in. To start, let's talk about files. I have open here in idle a program that asks the user for their three favorite ice cream flavors and assigns the user's responses to the variables flavor one, flavor two, and flavor three. If I run the program, it prompts me for my favorite ice cream flavor. I'll type chocolate. And then at the second prompt, I'll type lemon. And finally, I'll type coffee. The program tells me the three flavors I entered, and then the program ends. The ice cream flavors that I typed that were stored in the variables flavor one, flavor two, and flavor three are gone. Or to be clear, because we're running in idle, they're still in memory, but when we quit idle, they'll be gone. While the program was running, they were stored in part of RAM that was allocated to the program. RAM is temporary storage that programs are loaded into and that programs use to store variables. It holds values only while the computer is turned on, and it is often written over and erased while the computer is being used. Our program was allocated some RAM while it was running, but once the program was finished executing, the memory it was using was released to be used by another program. This is why we have other, more permanent forms of memory. We can write data out to a file to store it in permanent memory, like a hard drive or flash drive. Then the data won't be lost. When you save a word process document or spreadsheet or game state, it's written to a file that can then be read back in to restore your work. There are a lot of different file formats. The format specifies the configuration of data in the file and allows a program to make meaning out of it. If you've ever accidentally opened a JPEG or EXE file in a text editor, you'll have noticed that it looked very strange. A text editor will try to interpret the file that it opens using a text encoding such as ASCII or Unicode. With ASCII, for example, which is simpler, every eight bits will be interpreted as a character. But if the file isn't a text file, then interpreting it as a text file isn't going to make sense. For example, every eight bits might represent the color of a bit in a JPEG or part of the color of a bit, not a character. We're going to work with text files in this video. That means that we're going to be assuming the data we read in is using a text encoding. I'm going to open another version of the ice cream program. This version asks the user for the name of the text file that contains their three favorite ice cream flavors, and it reads the ice cream flavors from the text file and prints them to the screen. I'm importing OSPath and IO. The IO library allows me to annotate the variable that references the file, and the OSPath library allows me to check that the file exists before I try to read from it. And I have my flavor variables annotated as strings as before. That part is the same as the other program. But then I have two variables related to the file that we're going to read. The first is the file name variable, and that's a string. That's just the name of a file. You know that file names are text. You've named files before, and you always type text to do that. And you've probably changed file names too their text in a Python program will represent the file name as a string. The other variable is called ice cream underscore file, and I've annotated that as io.textio wrapper. This is the file reference variable. This will point to the actual data in the file on the disk. So I'll use this variable to get at what's in the file. Now in the program, the first thing we'll do is ask the user for the file name. And again, that's just text. So we'll just let file name reference whatever the user types, whatever is returned by the input statement. Now, they could give us an entire path name, but I'm not going to talk about paths in this video. 
Paths means a pathway through directories or folders to an actual file. For the purposes of this video, we're going to keep it simple and assume they're giving us the name of a file, and that file is stored in the same directory or folder as our program. That is key. The path is always going to start with the directory that our program is in. That's sort of home base. We then use the OS path library to check to see if there actually is a file with that file name. So OS path dot is file file name is going to return a Boolean true or false. That's why I'm using it as the condition in an if statement. If that returns true, then we're good to go. There's a file in the same directory with our program with the name the user gave us, and we can open it and read the ice cream flavors. If there isn't, then we'll jump to the else code, which informs the user that we couldn't find the file. So let's run it and see that behavior. It prompts me for a file name, and I have no text files in the directory with this program yet, so I'll just type icecream.txt, which doesn't exist, and I'm informed the file can't be found. Okay, so let's move on to reading from a file. Let's create a text file first for this program to read from. I can create that in any text editor, and as long as I save it as plain text, which means just the character encodings and no extra information about formatting or the document, then Python will be able to open it. We can even create it in idle, so let's do that. I'll choose File, New File, and then I'm going to type three ice cream flavors, one to a line. I'll type Rocky Road, and then enter, which brings the cursor down to the next line. That might seem obvious, but it's important to understand all of the characters that are in this file. Pressing enter inserts a new line character at the end of the first line. I'll type coffee, press enter, and then I'll type chocolate, and I'll save that as icecream.txt in the same directory with my program. Now you might want to make sure file extensions are shown in your operating system so you can see the type of your files. In Windows, I go to a File Explorer window and click the View tab and make sure the File Name Extensions box is checked. I'm suggesting this because I have seen all sorts of errors that beginners make when learning file processing, and one of them is to have a file named with two extensions. I have a video on file processing errors that beginners make and how to fix them, which I will link here. You might want to watch it if you end up having problems reading from a file. Okay, now that we have a text file, let's talk about the inside of this if statement, which is the code that executes if the file exists. The first thing we do is create a file reference variable from the file name. I've called that variable ice cream underscore file. Remember, this variable will point to the contents of the file and will allow us to read it. I create that by writing ice cream file equals or is assigned the value of open, open paren, file name, comma, and then in quotes, r, close paren. Okay, so the first parameter to the open command is obvious, hopefully. It's the name of the file we want to open, or more properly, the path to the file. Since our file is in the same directory as our program, it's just the name. Our name is stored in a variable called file name because we got the file name from the user, but we could also use a hard-coded string here. The second parameter is the mode. We use a string composed of lowercase r, to specify read mode. That means we're going to read from the file. That is the default mode, so you don't have to include that parameter if you're reading from the file. But I wanted to show you that parameter. If you're writing to a file, you use a lowercase w. If you open a file in write mode, if there is an existing file, it's destroyed. I'm not going to talk about writing to files in this video or the next, but I'll make a video about that at some time in the future. I find that it confuses beginners to learn about both reading and writing, and reading is more important at this time. You can also read about writing to files in my book or in a lot of places on the internet, such as the Python documentation. Now, the open command returns the file reference variable, which I'm assigning to ice cream underscore file. We will use that variable to get the data out of the file. 
And when we open a file, the file reference variable points to the beginning of the file. So looking at our file, icecream.txt, after the open command, icecream file points to Rocky Road. I'll draw an arrow in when I edit the video so we can keep track of where the file reference variable is pointing. Now let's look at the next line, which is flavor1 equals icecreamfile.readline. We're using the dot notation here, which is an object-oriented notation. What it means basically is read a line from ice cream file. Readline will return the line that is read, so that's going to return a string, and we're storing that in flavor1. Now it does something else as well. Readline also advanced that file reference variable, so it points to the next line of the file. So our file reference variable now points to coffee. And flavor1 now holds Rocky Road, followed by a new line. So I'm going to run the program in the debugger and show you that. Remember that we typed a new line, we pressed enter to get down to the next line. Well, that's a character that's in the file. You can see it if you open it in a word processor or text editor and turn on invisible characters. And readline just goes ahead and includes it in the string that it returns. So let me put a breakpoint in here before we read flavor one by right clicking on line 24 and choosing set breakpoint. And let me go into the console and choose debugger from the debug menu. And I'll make sure the source box is checked. Arrange my windows neatly and come back. Okay, now let's run the program. I'm going to press the go button, which will run the program until the breakpoint. I'm prompted for the name of the file and I'll type icecream.txt. Now we're on line 24. Let's press the over button, which will execute that line. Now look at the flavor one variable. Notice that it says rocky road slash slash n. So it's included a new line in the string. If I were to print that, I'd always get that extra new line when I print, which probably isn't what I want. So on the next line, I've written flavor one equals flavor one dot strip. And what that does is it will return a string with the white space stripped off the ends of the string before the dot. So we can't change a string. Strings are immutable, but we can create a new string that's the same string, but without the white space. If we want to use that new string, we need to assign it to a variable. I've assigned it back to flavor one because I don't want the string with the new line at the end. So let me press over and watch the flavor one variable. Notice that the new line is gone. Now for the next two lines, I'm reading the next two flavors from the file and I'm stripping off the white space at the same time. I wanted to show you why we're stripping the string, what it looks like before and after. And I also wanted to show you how to do that all in one step. So I'll press over and we see now flavor two with the value coffee and remember that the read line will have advanced the file reference variable, so it's now pointing to the last line of the file, chocolate. I'll press over again, and now we see flavor three is chocolate. And now I'll press go and close the debugger. We can see the print statement executes. And there's one final statement, which is ice cream file.close, which will close that file. It's important that you close any file in a program that you open once you're done with it. It's especially important with writing to files, but you want to close files that you're reading as well. Now, what if you have data in the file that isn't text data? You can convert to a numeric type just as we do when we're reading from the console using the input statement. Let's just throw a number at the end of our text file. I'll add 10. This could be an int or a float. And in my program, I'll add a variable annotation. I'll call the variable number, since it really has no purpose except to be a number, of type int. And then after we read all of the ice cream flavors, but before we close the file, of course, we'll write number equals ice cream file dot readline. 
Now, you saw what flavor one looked like when we read it from the file. Predict what number is going to look like, and let's run the program and see. I'll right click on the line with our prior breakpoint and choose clear breakpoint. And then I'll right click on the line in which we read number and choose set breakpoint. And we'll run in the debugger again. I'll press go and enter icecream.txt at the prompt. And now the program has stopped. We can see the values in the variables, file name, flavor one, flavor two, and flavor three. Let's press over, step over the line that will read the number 10 and remember your prediction and see if it matches what we see. Okay, so we have in quotes, 10 slash slash n. Does that match your prediction? The quotes tell us that this is a string and the slash n is the new line character. Okay, just as with reading from the console using the input statement, we can cast this to an integer as we read it by wrapping int around it and enclosing it in parentheses. So number equals int open paren ice cream file dot read line close paren. And I'll run the program, press go, type ice cream dot text, and now press over. And we can see that number is now 10, no quotes, no new line. I'll press quit and close the debugger. And in the console, I can ask type number to find out the type of the variable. This will confirm the data type for us. Python responds with class int. Now, just two more quick notes. One is you may have noticed that when we read from a text file, we read sequentially. In other words, one line at a time, top to bottom. We don't have to process or use or permanently store everything we read, but we do have to read through the whole file if we want to get to the end. There's no random access where we can jump to a specific location. And second, we have to know the basic structure of the file to read from it. In other words, what data we can expect to be there. This program expects three strings, each on a separate line, followed by an integer. We don't know what is in the strings or what the integer is, but we do need to know the data types and how many lines the data is spread across. To understand this, you need to distinguish between the structure and the data itself. So this program could read a file that contains hello, new line, hello, new line, hello, new line, 100. Or each string could be quite long, like the first paragraph of a book, followed by a new line, and then finally an integer. But this program will crash, or give us a runtime exception, if we only have one or two or three lines in the file, or if the fourth line can't be converted to an integer. That's the structure. String, new line, string, new line, string, new line, integer. You could think of the structure as a sort of a form that's being filled out, but what you fill it out with can be different each time. Okay, I think that's a lot. I'm going to end this video here, and I urge you to practice with this. Try rewriting the file reading program from scratch, and then try modifying the file structure and write a program that will correctly read from your new file structure. I've included an auto-graded exercise in the description of this video so you can practice with the video code. Once you've mastered the concepts here, you're ready to move on.